In Formula One, engineering a dominant car is perhaps the biggest factor that determines success. However, the recent dip in performance of the Mercedes team in Brazil has the F1 community raising concerns over the team's future. The Sao Paulo Grand Prix unfolded as a nightmare for Lewis Hamilton and George Russell. And while team principal Toto Wolff took the blame for their inexcusable performance, the echoes of unfulfilled promises are ringing louder than ever. Mercedes' woes at the Interlagos circuit began in qualifying, where they found themselves over seven-tenths behind pole sitter Max Verstappen. The struggle for pace also persisted through the sprint race and the main Grand Prix event. The Silver Arrows only managed to compete at the bottom end of the point scoring positions. And with Mercedes failing to provide a competitive car to Hamilton. With only one race remaining to break his winless streak, Hamilton admits he knew back in pre-season testing already that his W14 wasn't a championship winning car. 43 races into Formula One's ground effect aerodynamic era, and Mercedes have a single Grand Prix victory on the board, George Russell's P1 at the 2022 Brazilian Grand Prix. While Hamilton has come close a few times, it has only been a few with the Briton unable to complete the task, which has extended his winless streak to 44 races. It seemed inconceivable when he lost the world title to Verstappen in 2021, that it would mark the end of Hamilton's record-breaking success. But to date, he has stalled on 103 Grand Prix wins and seven drivers' championship titles. The blame for that, though, lies with Mercedes' ground-effect aerodynamic cars, with the Brackley squad struggling to understand the concept. While that resulted in the decision to drop the zero-pod design early on this season, Mercedes also having made other massive changes to the car, including the front suspension, even that didn't yield the sustained step forward they'd hoped for. When I first drove the car in February, I knew immediately that it wasn't a championship-winning car. It felt identical to the previous year's car so that was definitely a concern. Mercedes' advantage over Ferrari has come down to just four points, the same as it was after 2023's season opening race in Bahrain back in March, after a Las Vegas GP race day which did not go their way, despite the W14 showing much improved pace compared to the race before in Brazil. Hamilton, who finished seventh, twice lost ground in unfortunate collisions, while Russell saw fourth place turned into eighth by a five-second penalty for colliding with Verstappen. Ferrari finished second with Charles Leclerc and sixth with Carlos Sainz, meaning they outscored Mercedes by 16 points, to bring themselves into striking distance in the standings for Sunday's Abu Dhabi finale. Sad to say yet another time that we had pace but just no result. George after the incident with Verstappen, where he got the penalty, that was pretty much game over. The car had pace for the front. Maybe not to challenge Max, but behind. It is what it is. On Abu Dhabi, Wolf added, we have seen pace-ish today. I think we hopefully can recover and score solid podiums. Two years on from the controversial conclusion to the 2021 driver's title race in Abu Dhabi, when Verstappen and Hamilton started level on points, Wolf, in a thinly veiled swipe at former race director Michael Marzi, added to the written media. We are going there pretty much on equal points, with a proper race director, so that should be fine, and let's race. It's all down to the last weekend. They are very quick, they have done a good job. I think we could have been on par, but the result shows something different. With Red Bull totally dominant this season, Mercedes and Ferrari have had to revise their preseason targets downwards, and each try and at least secure the next best position on offer, even if, as Wolf alludes, finishing second will ultimately not be cause for particular celebration. But in addition to sporting pride, there are useful prize money considerations too. The difference between second and third in the Constructors' Championship is thought to be in the region of $10 million. Since overtaking fast starting Aston Martin for second in the team's standings at June Spanish GP, Mercedes have seen their advantage over third place fluctuate amid the season's unpredictable race to race pecking order behind Red Bull. Ferrari had been a season-high 56 points behind Mercedes after July's Hungarian GP, but have whittled that gap down to just four in the 10 races since. After a problematic start to the year, Ferrari team boss Frederick Vasser says the way the points gap has come down shows Ferrari are on a good path. If you consider that we were 60 points behind them a couple of races ago, we are on a good path. But Abu Dhabi will be another story, four points it's nothing or a lot. We were able to perform in Monza, in Singapore, in Austin, in Mexico, during this weekend on different tracks with different race conditions, different tyre compounds, and we can be more than motivated before Abu Dhabi. The momentum is for us, and let's see what happens.
Vasseur admitted that there were mixed emotions in the camp, after Leclerc had led the Las Vegas race, with the safety car just after his pit stop having done him no favours. For sure on our side it's a strange feeling. You do the pole position, you overtake three times Red Bull in the race, and you do P2. It's not usual. But I think also the timing of the safety car was the worst case scenario for us, four laps after our pit stop. Okay, it is like it is. Charles did a mega good job. But even Carlos, and if you consider the Thursday story, the FP1 story, plus the incident in turn 1, he was P20 or P18, and he was coming back P6. For us overall it was a good weekend. The fight is a role reversal of last year, when it was Ferrari who were defending second from Mercedes going into the Abu Dhabi finale, albeit holding a larger 19-point lead. However, the Scuderia outscored their rivals at Yas Marina to confirm the runner-up Red Bull, Ferrari's superior straight line speed will be critical again in Abu Dhabi, so they will be very quick in the first half of the lap. One of Ferrari's biggest strengths is traction out of the slow corners, so they will even be a threat to Red Bull once again here. It's the second half of the lap which features more flowing, medium speed turns which should bring Mercedes back into play. However, the corners were opened up ahead of the 2021 race, so the final sector is not that technical anymore. Overall, Ferrari are going to have the outright pace particularly over one lap, and it's just a case of will there be enough tyre wear for Mercedes to come back at Leclerc and Sainz over a long stint. As the criticism mounts and questions linger about Mercedes' promises, Hamilton is taking an active stance to address the team's performance issues. He has revealed his hands-on approach. He stated that he has been studying rival cars to gather crucial information for the team's aerodynamics department. You know, it's nice definitely to be progressing, and we have seen progress with this car, so fingers crossed for winter. I'll be staying. I'm in touch with the head of Aero and I'm just, like, checking up on him every week. Like, how are we doing and what have you tried? Where's the progress? Have you tried this? Hamilton's commitment to improvement goes beyond discussions alone. He has also been actively taking snapshots of rival cars, including the Alpha Tauri, providing the Mercedes factory with valuable insights. The seven-time world champion emphasized the need for crucial development over the next six months to close the gap with Red Bull. We've got to hope for the next six months to be the greatest six months of development that we've ever had to close that gap and to be really banging on the door. With Red Bull's dominance and challenges looming on the horizon, the winter break becomes a critical period for Mercedes to regroup, strategize, and deliver on promises that have come under scrutiny. So, do you think Ferrari can overtake Mercedes in the constructors' standings? And do you think Mercedes can compete with Red Bull again next season? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video please consider liking and subscribing to the channel and don't forget to click the bell button to be notified of future videos.